So hi there, good day, welcome to my channel where I'll talk about anything with your issue and motivation about health and if you might like my videos, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button for many videos to come. Hi there, a lot of times people say that their joints are bad because of what we call this condition as arthritis. Oh no! Now what are the main causes of these joint problems? So in this video, I would like to tackle on how you can monitor your urine. How can this chemical react to your body and where you can find this? So anyways, join me in this video in which we eat better, track better, and be better. So anyways, first let's talk about the uric acid. The uric acid is a byproduct waste of our body. So uric acid is a normal body waste. And the body gets rid of it when we urinate and bowel movement. Unless your body is creating too much uric acid or your kidneys are not functioning well. If that happens, uric acid levels in your blood rises to a very dangerous level. So what are the effects of high uric acid in your body. There is painful inflammation or gout. Gout is a form of arthritis. When your uric acid are excessively high, what they basically do is that they form crystals in our joints and the body now responses to them. When we are talking about gout, commonly the ones affected is the, the joint on the base of the big toe. Anyone can have uric acid. It is naturally occurring. Well, I don't want to say that you need to be anxious, but being careful of not creating too much uric acid is a very good investment. Prevention is better than cure, they say. So in my dieting, I also account the possibility and limit the possible uric acid production in my body. And by all means, obviously staying hydrated throughout my day. So anyways, I do this by tracking the purines in my food. So why purines? You said uric acid. What's the connection between purines and uric acid? What are purines? What are purines? Well, purines are chemical compounds normally found in our food and drink. Some food contains large amount of it and some contain very low amount. And by far, the purines are present in all living things. They can be found in animals and plants alike. Now, basically, the connection between uric acid and purine is that uric acid is just a byproduct of the purine processes happening in our bodies. This means that the higher amount of purine-rich foods you eat, the higher the amount of uric acid in your body can be in turn can result to gout. Oh, now no. what can we do to prevent the bad effects of uric acid? Easy. One is take caution of what food you eat and number two is track the food or track the purines in your own food. Anyways I am giving you the list of food examples and beside them are the purine content they have and also I will give examples on how I monitor my purine. First let me give you this table that have the highest amount of purine per gram. First, let me give you a lot of foods that are of highest strength as a purine carrier. So anyways, table up, here it is. So these foods have 400 milligrams of purines in them and high per 100 grams of yield. It is. The sardines in oil have 480 milligrams of purines. The liver or calf actually. 460 milligrams per 100 grams. The flat mushrooms or edible bolitos, simply dried, we have 488 milligrams per 100 grams. The calf's neck, 1260 milligrams. The ox liver with 554 milligrams of purines. Ox spleen, 444 milligrams of purines. The pig's heart, 530 milligrams of purines per 100 grams. Pig's liver, 515 milligrams of purines, pig's lungs, 434 milligrams, pig's spleen, we have 516 milligrams, sheep's spleen, 773 milligrams, smoke sprat, 804 milligrams, theobromine, 2300 milligrams per 100 grams, 
baker's yeast we have 680 milligrams the brewer's yeast we have 1810 milligrams per 100 grams of brewer's yeast and now as you can see a lot of internal organs are listed uh, highest rank of purines so if you want to have a diet be mindful of internal organs if you already have gout be mindful of eating a heart and liver of these animals they have a lot of urine per 100 grams for you so the list provides greens per 100 grams of the food say if you have 200 grams of liver and from that list we have 515 milligrams of purine per 100 grams of pig's liver 200 milligrams times 515 milligrams per 100 grams is equivalent to 1030 milligrams whoa that's a lot according to this article which i link in the description down below is that you can have 1400 milligrams of purines or even 1800 milligrams of purine per day if you have a normal uric acid level in your body it is still okay well then if you set 1400 milligrams as the safe limit then the pig's liver of 200 milligrams is already high for you having 1030 milligrams of purine is quite risky for just a single meal so anyways if you might ask my diet i typically have 300 to 700 milligrams of purine per day in my diet i seldom reach 900 to 1000 milligram level well that's because first thing is i don't really eat a lot of liver and any other internal organs i don't really like that much but i like only the chickens and pork and even cows so now let me give you the list of my common foods that I normally incorporate in my diet and beside them are the list of the purines they have. Now this time it is per 1 gram only because I have already multiplied it by the exact grams that I will present. So here are the common list of my foods again and beside them are the purine content they have in grams. Table up number 1. We have eggs. At 55 grams of eggs, we have 28 milligrams of purine. The milk or low-fat milk, we have 250 grams and we have a purine of 125 milligrams. Oats of 55 grams, we have 52 milligrams of purine. Jum size or the common food in the Philippines. Common rice, we have 200 grams. We have 0 milligrams of purine. We have the fried drumsticks. At 140 grams, we have 137 milligrams of purine. The fresh pork chop at 30 grams and 44 milligrams of purine. We have an apple, 250 grams, which is the size of your palm, is 35 milligrams of purine. We have banana at 150 grams, we have 86 milligrams of purine. Peanuts, all types really, 25 grams or 20 milligrams of purine. The galonggong or the mackerel, we have 50 grams of mackerel at 73 milligrams of purine. We have tuna at 50 grams, we have 129 milligrams of purine. Avocado at 150 grams, we have 29 milligrams of purine. Cacao nibs at 25 grams, we have 18 milligrams of purine. Up Chinese cabbage or choy or we call it pechay. At 140 grams, we have 52 milligrams of purine. The bukupai with butter at 150 grams has 25 milligrams of purine. The imbutido, 50 grams, 41 milligrams of purine. The beef liver at 200 grams has 920 milligrams of purine. And anyways, if you want more of the list of Purine in foods per 100 grams, I will link it in the description down below. There you can find a large list of purine foods. So in case you want to be cautious and want to be on the health side of life, I have created this video for you. Practically these are estimates only. But we know that doing something blindly as saying, Oh, this is bad for you, has a lot of gaps in it. Well, practically people don't believe they cannot see or measure something, if you know what I mean. So anyways, track your foods. If not, take a list of the most common foods you eat every day and get the purines of those foods and make, uh, make a 
basically a pattern from that way you will not monitor it every day because monitoring every day is really tedious so if you have this master list or if you have this list of common foods and get their urines with it then you can make your diet and make your life easier without listing all of it every day over and over again but anyways that's all for this video guys and if you might like this video please hit that like button hit the subscribe button for many videos to come and if you find this video useful to you always remember eat better track better and be better this is ray signing off